Hello, my name is Taylor Guerrero and I'm here with Blake. Um, he's going to be helping me demonstrate the head to toe assessment today. Um, we're going to start by doing the A white process, which is you announce yourself, wash your hands, identify the patient, um, provide some privacy, and then explain the procedure. So I'm going to be doing the head to toe assessment today. Um, can we start with your name and date of birth? Blake Lotzinger, 05-16-1996. Okay, good job. Um, so then you would check their armband and make sure that everything matches up to what they're saying. And then we're going to um, be finding out how oriented and alert they are. Um, so I would ask, do you know where you are right now? Yes, I'm at uh, well, the house. Yeah. Um, and then do you know who the President of the United States is? Donald Trump. Okay. So that would mean that he is alert and oriented times four. Okay, so next I will go ahead and get the vitals, which is the respiratory rate, the pulse, the temperature, the blood pressure, and um, do you have any pain on a scale of zero to ten? Zero. Okay. Um, and then I could get the height, the weight, um, the BMI, and at this point you're going to be inspecting just how he responds and how he's acting, um, his emotional state, um, and you're going to be looking at the skin and making sure that it matches with their origin. You're going to know if it's um, clammy or sweaty, is it cool or warm to the touch. Um, and then you can also know um, any outward abnormalities as, as well if you see anything, um, and then personal hygiene too. Okay, so first we're going to inspect the head and we're going to do that by um, noting the color of the skin. Um, is there any lesions? Is there any masses on the head? Um, and then you're just going to make sure that it matches um, the size, matches his body. And then we're going to go ahead and start with palpitation. Normally you can put on some gloves for this. Um, but you're going to go ahead and just palpate around the head and feel for any masses, um, lesions. And then you're going to inspect for any kind of infestation like um, lice or alopecia where the hair starts um, um, like disappearing a little bit. So now we're going to go ahead and test cranial nerve um, 7, which is a facial nerve. Um, and you're going to go ahead and close your eyes tightly, open them, smile, frown, um, and then pop out your cheeks. Okay, good. And then I also want to add, um, you want to go ahead and note if there's any drooping of the face as well. Like if one side is drooping um, on the left or the right, that could be um, indication of a stroke. So next, um, we're going to go ahead and palpate the temporal artery, which is right here. Um, and you're going to do it bilaterally. So we're going to um, check that. Alright, and then you would rate it, um, and his was a plus two. So next, we're going to um, test cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal nerve. And this is where he's going to clench his teeth. And I'm going to feel the ma masseter muscle and the temporal muscle. And then you just want to make sure that it's a nice firm um, ball. Next, um, we're going to feel the um, temporal masseter, man or no, I'm sorry, temporal mandibular joint. And you're going to do that by placing your hands on the outside of the face and you're going to have them open and close your jaw. And then you just want to feel for any kind of clicking or um, rubbing sensation, uh, sensation, sorry. And then last, you're going to palpate the sinuses, um, the frontal and the maxillary, I think is what it's called. And you just do that by pressing your thumbs into them. And you're going to ask if they feel any kind of tenderness or pain. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Just let me know if you feel any kind of tenderness or pain. Feel anything? No. Do you feel anything? No. Okay. And that's it. Next, we're going to inspect the eyes and we're going to make sure that they're even, um, they're centered, make sure they're not swollen. You're going to check the sclera for any redness. You're going to look at the iris. You're going to look at the pupils. Make sure they're, um, they're at a normal range of in between three millimeters and five millimeters. Um, and then you're going to check the conjunctiva by just kind of lightly pulling down, which I'm going to do. And normally you would have gloves for everything, but um, I don't have any, so we're just going to pull it down. Oh no, you can open your eyes. And we're going to look at the sclera, I mean the conjunctiva. And his was nice and pink, which that's what you um, want when you're looking at the sclera of the eye. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and, oh, you're also going to look at, um, look for any strabismus and alopecia of the eye, where um, their eyes could be looking this way or crossed, or one pupil could be dilated and one can be constricted. Just any kind of abnormality of the eye. Now we're going to test the um, cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, which is oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens. 
And we're gonna start by looking for nystagmus, which is involuntary shaking of the eye using a pen light. Um, and you're gonna hold it about 12 to 14 inches away from the person's nose, and you're gonna move in the six cardinal fields of gaze. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Just follow the pen light. Okay, good. Um, next, you're gonna te um, test how re re I'm sorry, reactive the pupils are to light, and you're gonna do that by normally dimming the lights, but I can't do it right now. So you would dim the lights and then they will look at something in the distance to dilate their eye. And then you would go in with the pen light at the side. So go ahead and look at something in the distance. And then you're gonna go in with the pen light at the side and you're gonna make sure that um, the pupils constrict on both sides whenever you do one eye. And then you would just repeat on the other side. So look at something in the distance. All right, and they both constricted. Um, next you're gonna test for accommodation and that's where you have them look off at something in the distance um, and then you would use the pen light and hold it out and move it in towards their nose. Okay, and just follow the pen light. All right, and you would just wanna make sure that their eyes cross and that their pupils constrict. And if everything was normal and within range, you would label that as purilla. Next, we're gonna inspect the ears and you're gonna do that by um, first inspecting. You're gonna note any redness, drainage, ask if there's any kind of pain. Do you have any pain in your ear? No, okay. So then next you're gonna palpate and you're gonna do that by, here, do it on this side. Um, okay, let's move a little bit closer. You're gonna do that by palpating the outer cartilage. Um, you're gonna check for any kind of masses or lesions. Um, then you're gonna palpate the tragus right here. Okay, is there any kind of tenderness or anything so far? No, okay. And then you're gonna do the mastoid process, which is behind the ear right here, this little ball. You're gonna palpate it, any tenderness. And then um, note any redness um, or pain if there were some. Um, and then next you would use a otoscope and you would look inside the ear. Um, I don't have one, so I'm just going to kind of look with my pen light. Um, and then, you know, you're going to inspect and note anything in there and you're going to be looking for the cone of light, which you want at five o'clock on the right ear and then seven o'clock on the left ear. And then the last thing for the ears is you're going to test cranial nerve eight, which is vestibulocochlear. And you're gonna do that by, you're gonna close one side of your ear and I'm gonna whisper two words and you just gotta tell me what I say. Ready? Okay, so. Yep, then we'll go ahead and do the other side. Apple banana. All right, good job. Okay, so next we're gonna inspect the nose and you would make sure that it's midline to the face. Um, you're gonna ask um, if they've had any kind of drainage or pain in your nose. Um, and then you're gonna ask them to breathe in and out of each nostril. So go ahead and hold one nostril and breathe in and out. Okay, and then do the other side. Okay, and he did that. And then you're gonna go ahead and use your pen light and kind of look inside and make sure there's no polyps, um, redness, or drainage. So we'll go ahead and look. Okay, and then um, you also wanna make sure that there's no deviated septum because that can interfere with the breathing. And then the last thing you're gonna do is test cranial nerve one, which is the olfactory nerve. So I'm gonna have you close your eyes and you're gonna close one of your nostrils and you're just gonna tell me what you smell. Coffee. Okay, and we'll do the other side. Coffee. Yeah. So normally you would do um, something different for each nostril, but I kind of just use coffee for both, but that would be it for the nose. So next we're gonna inspect the mouth and normally you would do this with a, a tongue blade. I don't have one though, so um, I'll just kind of have him open his mouth. Um, and then you're gonna look at each side of the cheeks, make sure there's no lesions or sores. You're gonna have them stick out your tongue, okay? And then you would note the color. Um, you're gonna know if it's nice and moist or if it's dry. Um, you're gonna look under the tongue, so go ahead and lift your tongue up. You're gonna look for any kind of lesions. You're gonna inspect the teeth. Um, and then you're going to um, test cranial nerve nine, which is hypoglossal. And that's where you would stick your tongue and say, ah. Uh, yep, and then you make sure that the uvula goes up and that it's midline, and then you would test the gag reflex. So I'm not gonna do that, but you would test the gag reflex. And then last, you're gonna test cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve. Um, and the fact that he could talk and swallow means that it's intact. Next, you're gonna inspect the neck and you're gonna start by having them look up and you're gonna look at the um, trachea and make sure that it's centered and uh, make sure there's no masses or lumps there. 
And we're gonna go ahead and test cranial nerve 11, which is the accessory nerve. And you're gonna look up, down, side, side. Um, and then, um, and then you're gonna shrug against resistance. Okay, perfect. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is we would put their head at a 45 degree angle, which I can't really do right now. So we'll pretend his head is at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna look at the jugular vein, make sure there's no distension there. So he would just turn his head um, and then he would look and you can palpate and just know any kind of distension in the jugular vein, which I do not see any. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead and palpate the trachea. So go ahead and look back up and you're gonna just um, palpate the trachea, make sure that there's no lumps there and make sure that it is midline. Um, just kind of confirming that. Next, we're gonna palpate the um, lymph nodes and you're gonna start with the preauricular, the postauricular, the occipital, the parotid, the submandibular, the submental, the jugulodigastric, the um, superficial cervical, and then you're gonna move down the um, deep cervical chain to the posterior, um, the posterior cervical, and the supraclavicular. Yeah, okay. And then was there any tenderness there? Okay. So next, we're gonna palpate the carotid artery. So that would be this one right here. And you do it one at a time, not bilaterally. Um, so we'll palpate. All right, and that's a... Two plus. And um, two plus. So next, we're gonna auscultate. Um, and you're gonna do this using the bell of the stethoscope. And you're gonna listen for a um, brewery, which is a swishing sound in the um, carotid artery. So you would do this by having them breathe in, breathe out, and then hold the breath and listen. Okay, so hold on one second. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so breathe in, breathe out, and then hold it. Okay, so breathe normally. Okay, so there is none noted there, and then we'll do the other side. Okay, ready? Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, and there was none noted there. So next we're gonna inspect the upper extremities. You would do this by first looking, making sure there's no swelling, redness, um, or any kind of masses or lesions. And then we're gonna go ahead and palpate the radial artery. Do that bilaterally. Yep, and it, his are a plus two. And then you're gonna go ahead and check capillary refill where you press on the fingernail and then just make sure that that um, blood is returning in less than three seconds. Then we're gonna check skin turgor. You just kind of pinch it and it snaps right back, so that's good. Then you're gonna check the range of motion of the fingers and then ask, is there any pain in your fingers? Okay, the other side. Okay, then we'll go ahead and um, palpate the brachial arteries, do that bilaterally. And his are a plus two. Um, and then next we're gonna check the range of motion of this joint right here, and you would do that by holding the elbow and moving it. And then you wanna feel for any kind of clicking or rubbing, you do that on the other side. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and um, have him stand up and you're gonna check for a drift. And you do this by, you would close your eyes and just hold your arm straight out in front of you for 10 seconds. Okay, we'll just go ahead and put it down, that's good. Um, but you would check for the drift. If he did have a drift, he would close his eyes and his hands would drift. But next, we're gonna inspect the chest and we're gonna do that by looking if there's any kind of masses or lesions or any kind of abnormality that we can note. You're gonna note his breathing. Is he um, having labored breathing or is it a nice, even and unlabored breathing? And then you're gonna look at the anterior and posterior diameter um, and for the barrel chest, just to make sure that that is all um, well approximated. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to some heart sounds. And you would do that by using the diaphragm of the stethoscope first. And we're gonna 
start, sorry, we're gonna start with the aortic valve, which is, oh my gosh, that's so weird to talk. Okay, you're gonna start with the aortic valve, which is the at the right sternal border in the second intercostal space. So that would be right here. So we're gonna go ahead and listen. Okay, and then S2 is gonna be louder here, and then you're gonna go over to the um, pulmonic valve. S2 is gonna be louder here as well. And then you're gonna go down to Herb's point, right in the third intercostal space. And this doesn't have a specific, um, which one is louder. Then you're gonna go to the tricuspid valve, which is the fourth intercostal space. And S1 is gonna be louder here. And then you're gonna to go to the uh, mitral valve, which is the fifth intercostal space. And S1 is gonna be louder there. And then here you would check the apical pulse for 60 seconds, um, which we're gonna not do to save some time. And then you're gonna go ahead and redo the whole entire thing using the bell of a stethoscope. So we'll go ahead and do that. So same positions. And you want to listen for any kind of murmurs, so that's a swishing or a blowing sound. Okay, okay. and I did not hear anything. So next we're gonna listen to the lung sounds and you wanna do that for each lung sound, you wanna make sure you listen for one full respiration. Um, so first we're gonna start by using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Okay, and you're gonna start anteriorly and we're gonna do first the right and left apex, which is right up here. So we'll go ahead and listen to that first. Okay, so just breathe in and out, a deep breath. Um, so we'll start with the right. Okay, and then we're going to move down to the um, second intercostal space for the right and left upper lobes. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to check the right middle lobe and the left lower lobe, um, and that's in the fifth intercostal space. Okay, and then you're going to do the sixth intercostal space, which is right under the um, armpit here. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and out. And then we're gonna do the um, posterior side. So I'll go back here. Here, I'll kind of move it. Okay. And you're gonna do the posterior side using the diaphragm um, as well. And then we're gonna do the right and left apex first. right and left upper lobes, which is, you're going to use um, C7, which is this lump right here, and you're going to go down to T3, and um, in between that shoulder blade and the spine right there, you're going to want to listen. Okay, and then in between three, uh, T3 and T10, you're going to um, kind of listen to a few spaces in there. 
Next, we're gonna um, do the stomach, and first we're gonna inspect it. The patient's gonna be laying on their back, and I'm gonna ask, do you have any kind of stomach problems? No. Okay, and um, when was your last bowel movement? This morning. Okay, and then is there any problems urinating? No. Or starting a stream? Okay, and then, so now we're gonna kinda look for some pulsations, um, see if the abdomen is distended, and then we're gonna look for any kind of masses like hernias, and his looks um, fine. So next we're gonna auscultate using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And there should be five to 30 sounds per minute. And you're gonna check each of the um, quadrants. So we'll start with the right lower. Sorry, let me fix this. Okay, so we'll start with the right lower. And you're going to check it for a minute and you just want to make sure that there's about 5 to 30 sounds per minute in each of the quadrants. Okay. And everything sounds normal. Okay, so next we're going to listen to um, vascular sounds. We're going to do it using the bell of the stethoscope. And you just want to listen for a brewery, which is that blowing or swishing sound. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and the first one we're gonna listen to is the aorta artery, which is below the xiphoid process. Um, like right here, we're gonna listen for that brewery. I don't hear anything. And then we're gonna listen to the right and left renal artery, which is a little bit below that. Okay. And then we're going to listen to the um, right and left iliac artery, which is uh, below the belly button. Okay, and everything sounded normal. So the next thing that we're going to do is palpate. Um, you're going to do light palpation and then deep palpation. Um, the light palpation you're going to do around each of the quadrants, and then you're going to just ask if they have any kind of tenderness or any if anything feels uncomfortable. So I'll go ahead and lightly palpate. Does everything feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're gonna do deep palpation, which is about four to five centimeters in. And um, a lot of people like to use the um, two hands. So we'll go ahead and do that. Ready? And just tell me if you feel any kind of tenderness or uncomfortable feeling. No. Okay, perfect. Next, we're going to inspect the lower extremities, um, and you just want to look at the color of the skin, um, note any kind of swelling, redness, ask if they have any kind of problems with their legs, any tenderness in the legs. No. Okay. Um, so next, we're going to palpate the um, popliteal pulse, which is behind the knee, and you would do that bilaterally, so I'm just going to... That. Okay, and his is a two plus. Um, next, we're going to um, run our fingers along this tibia here, and you're gonna push slightly to check for some edema. With the edema, it's gonna kind of like cave in. You'll know if it's edema, and he does not have any kind of edema in his legs. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna palpate the feet. Um, normally you'd have some gloves, but um, we're gonna just go ahead and palpate the feet for the posterior tibial pulse, which is um, in the ankle. You would do that bilaterally. Okay, and it's a plus two. And then we're gonna, um, do the the um, dors, dorsalis pedialis um, pulse, which is right on top of the foot here. That one. OK. 
Okay, and that one's um, a two plus. Okay, so next we're gonna check capillary refill and the toes, and you would do the same thing in the finger. You would just kind of press the toe and make sure that the color is coming back. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that he can push. So go ahead and just push against my hands with your toes, okay? And then lift your legs, okay? So last we're gonna um, test the Bobinci reflex and that's where you're gonna take a reflex hammer and you're gonna run it um, through the ball of the foot and then around the curve. Um, I'm not gonna do it because he's really ticklish and he doesn't really want me to do it. And I don't really have the reflex hammer, so. But um, yeah, you would just follow through and then around that curve. And you just wanna make sure that the toes um, will curl in because that is a normal response. If they fan out, then that is a abnormal response. Last thing that we're gonna check is back to the back. You just wanna inspect it, look for any kind of moles, ask them about them, ask if they've changed, stuff like that. Um, and you just wanna make sure that there's no lesions, masses, sores. Um, you wanna check like the coccyx area and the back of the heels as well when you're inspecting the whole back side. Um, and then that is it for the head to toe assessment. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.